Hi, everyone. I'm Samantha Jensen, and I'm super excited to be on the Online Prosperity Show uh, talking about social media marketing and publishing a book and some insider on how it, how, it, um, how it all unfolds in terms of running a business and the challenges that we encounter. So watch the video and connect with us. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the marketing, social media strategist, and author, Samantha. Samantha, how are you doing, my love? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely. Now, obviously, we've been chatting a little bit earlier on, but viewers, you would understand that every one of our shows is designed to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And um, we brought in Samantha, who runs a consulting business that is on a mission to help small business owners like yourself to actually dominate um, you know, your industry, to become an influential leader, and you will be um, you know, either authoring your own book or actually telling your own brand story um, you know, using social media. Now, I could go on and on about what Samantha is really good at. She's got a $1 strategy that she just <laughs> taught me about today and we're going to be talking about that so be sure to see how that would actually differentiate you from all the people that are in the market space right there now Samantha, tell us a little bit about your story and um how you you created you know platform for success yeah great look a platform for success was born at a very interesting time as i like to call it so before i, I stepped into the business world i actually worked in the corporate nine to five uh, rat race as i call it in superannuation so it was nothing to do with marketing or sales or publishing i nine to five in superannuation working in the city here in melbourne um, did that for nine years and then when i was pregnant with my son i went through a big uh personal life crisis and I was suddenly you know pregnant with a child had a three-year-old and I became a single mom and at that time I actually took a hold of you know I needed to stop and look at my life where was my life headed where was my career headed what was I actually on this earth to do and what unfolded as a result of that six to nine months on from that um, juggling you know, a baby of about three and a half months and a three-year-old that had just started kinder was a business that was born. Now, truth be told, it was actually not platform for success that actually I started off with. I started off with an online retail store because my traditional formal educational qualifications um, are actually in the fashion designing space. So I actually started an online clothing store. And within a few months, I realized that it was actually the whole process that I had put together for this business was not really thought out through. There was no long-term plan. There was no business plan. There was no marketing plan. But I had just jumped in without actually thinking about it long-term. I had jumped in with, well, I understand the front end of a business. So surely the back end, I can figure it out. I can wing it a bit. I can test and measure and see how it works out but the truth be told it was it was exhausting it was it took a toll on me mentally but also I knew that when I stopped and reflected on it it was never going to be profitable if I kept going the way I was so at the time I actually decided I think it was about five months into that business I decided to actually get my very first business coach uh, so took the little money I had in the bank account and invested on it invested into something that I thought was going to give me clarity around this particular business. But look, I look back now with so much gratitude because when I invested that money I had, you know, took it out of the bank account, cut the household budget right down because, you know, I'm tapping into my savings here and invested into that business coach. What I learned from there was just amazing. Like I suddenly went, I can see why this business is not working. I can see why, I thought I can wing it, but I can't. You know, I need to um, look at the logistical things from the back end of the business, not just focus on, you know, that nice side of things that we see in business, the front end that looks always cool and is always trending and looks amazing. There was so much happening underneath. It's a bit like when you see um, something beautiful. It's like, you know, it has been through some rough times before it becomes beautiful. So... Um, essentially platform for success was born purely out of the fact that I actually discovered my purpose. 
Um, and I let that online business go and I actually worked on myself and I actually fell in love with social media and marketing as a result of working with my very first business coach. So Platform for Success essentially was born out of that as opposed to me going, okay, I'm going to start a business called Platform for Success. It was born from that and hence the reason why I called it um, Platform for Success because it was layer upon layer that helped me you know, understand what success meant to me and how I was going to measure success and then how that was going to in return help people that I wanted to help just like myself in business because now I had got someone that had given me the tools and I wanted to pay it forward. So hence the name Platform for Success and essentially that's how it started um, about five years ago. So, yeah. Well, congratulations on you discovering your path and actually landing straight on your feet. I mean, all those things, trials and tribulations that were happening um, within you, most of those things would have stopped you dead in your tracks and then you'd have just been like, you know what, I'm just better off looking for a job and not worrying about, you know, you know, moving forward with the business, but you soldiered on. Now, is this a normal startup story um, as in do people just go in looking for um, a, a, a business that they think they can do and then later on figure out oh no I think I'm biting a little bit more than I am able to chew here and then reflect back or get a mentor or is this something that was just unique to you do you find people with the same story as as you um, are having there right now Look, I do, to be honest, Prosper, I do. I th there is a two part to that. So I think one part is where people go, I'm really passionate about doing whatever it is that they're doing and they go, I'm going to make a business out of it. The other side is very much, you know what, I've been thinking about it. I'm just going to dive in and throw myself into it. So regardless of where their mindset is and how they're feeling emotionally, it's only a very small percentage from what I have seen with you know, all the clients I've worked with, whether they've been established businesses or startups, um, where they kind of go, okay, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love to do. Now, what do I need to look at before I throw myself in? You know, it's a bit like saying I'm going to the pool. Do I need bathers or do I, am I going to just throw myself in in my T-shirt and shorts? Like, you know, but a lot of people seem to go, I'll just stand at the edge of the pool and then make a decision. Do I need to go run, run to the shops and get some bathers or just jump in? And that's what I want to give people um, the inside going, you know, you actually, before you get to the pool, before you make that decision, you need to stop and go, what is it that I want? You know, are you, are you genuinely aware of your purpose? Why on earth are you here? What are you meant to serve? Or are you pursuing freedom as people call it, but it's not really freedom because truth be told, when you run a business, you work, 10 times harder than when you have a job that, you know, every fortnight that money is going to come into that bank account and you can call in a fake sticky from time to time and you still get the money, <laughs> you know, whereas with the business, you don't work or you are not driven every day and nothing happens. So it is very much, it's a two part process. Um, I think it really depends on the individual and where they're coming from, what their background is and where they fit into that equation. So, yeah. Absolutely. Because the reason why I asked that question is right about now, anybody with a pair of sweatpants, a laptop and, you know, um, a niche can think they can be an entrepreneur, but there's a whole lot of things that need to be done behind the scenes um, in order for them to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. <clears throat> and I'm glad to hear you went past all of those things and, um, you know, now you've got, um, you know, a, a thriving platform. What would you say is the biggest lesson that, um, you know, you've learned from what you've just say, said, I've actually learned that um, what you see as somebody else's end product is not, um, you know, how you should start comparing yourself because, you know, when people see you now, they want to just start off as, okay, where do, how do I start writing a book? How do I start, um, you know, with social media, but this, all, this whole backstory um, you know, behind there. So what would you say is one of the biggest lessons that you, you, you could, you, 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 you learned from your own personal journey? Yeah. And look, if I could, now that I look back at, I think along the way I had different lessons, but now when I look at it, you know, five years on, I think the biggest turning point for me was hiring a mentor that had achieved what I wanted to achieve 
on that journey. So over the five years, I have had four business mentors, um, all in Australia. Um, and obviously, I've invested in countless courses overseas and you know, trainings and all of that. But in terms of actual business mentors, they've always been either in Melbourne or Sydney. So, you know, where I can fly in and see them kind of thing. And what I found is as long as the business coach or the mentor is on the same journey of me, so they are helping the audience that I'm aspiring to help along the way, the goals that I want to achieve in two years, three years, five years, they have achieved that. And they're not too far out because I did have one mentor, you know, I like to be transparent and very honest. I did have one mentor that I invested in, but he was very far out from me. So he was probably... 15 steps away from me on the journey. So when he gave me strategies, to be honest, I didn't have the cash flow to invest in those. I could not in my mind budget and do the things that he wanted me to do to push the business because I was still so far along, you know, like I could see it, you know, it's like saying I'm going from Melbourne to Sydney, but I can't see what Sydney looks like, but I know I'm going to get there, you know, whereas with the other three, um, they were probably four or five steps ahead of me. So that was you know, sufficient to go, okay, I jump through this, then I do that. And then I jump the next and then I'm there. Boom. Okay. I've got there now the next. So looking back five years on, I think it's really important when you're starting up or even if you've just gotten started and you've been on the business journey for, you know, three, five years, whenever you invest into a mentor, invest into someone that has been there, done that, and is on that same path as opposed to a completely different journey, just because you are drawn to them as a person as opposed to the model. So you've got to take a check in on that and invest on that because they have, they'll be able to eliminate most of the mistakes that you're potentially going to make. And remembering they're only five steps ahead of you. So it's a lot easier to keep track of things as opposed to 15, 20 steps away. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you said, you know, we're here to live, we're here to learn and we're here to contribute and the learning part, we actually learn from other people um, that are going through, you know, the same journey that we are, but they also have to have some sort of, um, you know, you know, experience, which we um, haven't yet, yet have gotten, which is um, pretty, pretty cool there. So on your platform there, you specialize a lot, um, you know, uh, with two distinct um, you know, categories or social media platforms, which yeah. is Facebook and um, LinkedIn. Can you yeah. tell me which one out of the blank, uh, out of the blue is your favorite so far? Okay. So as I said to you before, I like to be very transparent and honest. The one I love the most is Facebook. Um, no doubt about that. I live and breathe Facebook, as I say. Um, LinkedIn is my second favorite, but together with Facebook and LinkedIn is where I would say, you know, our business thrives the most in terms of generating leads, connecting with audiences and actually giving them resources. So the sell or the sales pitch or the marketing is a byproduct of us being present, serving, adding value, connecting. And then that happens as a result of that. But Facebook and LinkedIn are the main two. I mean, I'm on a few other platforms, uh, but we don't actually um, have a a strategy per se that we would we would openly discuss because we are still very much using Facebook and LinkedIn to drive the business, but also in terms of building relationships and connecting and you know going places. Facebook and LinkedIn are the two we're specialising in. So yeah, great. So, now just going to, now just going to um, Facebook in and of itself. Yeah. Um, a lot of things have changed. The algorithm changes. You know, every six months or, you know, the structure of how the platform has, um, you know, you know, how it distributes, distributes content for pages that are business, um, you know, orientated is now zero in the news feed. Yeah. Um, how do I, as a business person, actually then start, you know, with Facebook right now, you know, knowing that what used to be free is now a paid platform. And if my business is not generating as much for me to reach out to my audience, um, how are you advising people to, to move ahead? Yeah, look, definitely with the latest changes that happened at the start of, um, you know, 2018, people went into a little bit of a meltdown going, oh my gosh, business pages are not going to be working anymore. What am I going to do? I don't want to have to pay lots and lots of money. Um, 
yes, business pages in terms of reach has completely dropped, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't, you don't need a business page, you still need a business page. What I am encouraging and that we are actually testing over the last, um, since it went live, I think we started testing some things behind the scenes the week after. Um, and what we're noticing is the Facebook Live, so your video side of things. If you put a video on a business page, or even better, a Facebook Live on a business page, that is still going to reach and gauge traction. So your your common post, the little photos, they're not doing anything that you'll be lucky if it reaches even 0.5% because it's really not going anywhere. But your lives and your videos are what is going to take you from where you are to that next stage. So I'm encouraging people to actually jump on the lives, jump, you know, if you're not comfortable with the lives, that's okay. Pre-record a video, you know, edit it a little bit, give it a front, you know, cut it a little bit, you know, make it a little bit professional and put it on your business page. From your business page, then you want to share it into your groups or onto your personal account because that's where then you can build more traction because you can't eliminate the no business page option because if you want to run paid ads, you actually need to have a business account linked to a business page. So, you know, they're not eliminating that. They're just saying, you know, we don't want people to just see, keep seeing content. We want them to see value. So step up your game or you lose. And essentially that's what Facebook has done. So to business owners watching and that are curious to know what is the best way forward, you have to embrace video. If you're not going to embrace video, well, you're missing out and you're, you're leaving money on the table. That's what I say to people. You know, you're offering a service or a product and if you're not on video, then yeah, you're saying, I don't want any more customers. Go away. I don't know. Thank you. I'm happy just holding on to my laptop. I'm just going to hold on to it. So, so, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I want to coin a phrase from what you're saying. So basically, the closer you are to the, the camera, the closer you are to the bank. Yes, yes, yes. Very close. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously, now that we've gotten Facebook, um, you know, the, the, the strategy basically you're saying is video. Would Can you translate that also to LinkedIn or does LinkedIn um, need its own, you know, game and, and tricks in order for you to win this uh, social media game? Yeah, so LinkedIn is a little bit different, meaning um, LinkedIn videos are still just building. You know, um, they're the, the slow ones, as I call it. Videos are working on LinkedIn, but not as strong as building relationships. So what I mean by relationships is, first things first, when you reach out and connect with someone on LinkedIn, please send them a note. There's nothing worse than just hitting connect, 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 connect. And there's no note. I want to know why you're reaching out and connecting with me. I want to know, was there something that you saw on my profile? Or did you just see a mutual friend? What is it that triggered you to hit the connect button? So on LinkedIn, what I found is the biggest uh, turning point is how you connect. Because that first impression matters. That you know, first impressions matter when you see someone for the first time, you know, when they walk in, before they even open their mouth and they can say anything, you have kind of gone in five seconds what do I think? Do they look credible? Do I trust them? You know, how do they move? And essentially LinkedIn is the same thing just on a screen. And that message is where you kind of can say, you know, I want to reach out and connect because of whatever reason. So first things first, uh, the connecting process. The next thing I would say is uh, a lot of people get hung up on the 500 plus connections that they've got to have. So they just randomly add people. I say, if you're just starting out on LinkedIn, yes, you want to build up to about 500 connections. But the truth is, I made thousands and thousands of dollars in sales when I only had, I think, 200 or 250 connections. So, um, you know, how do you justify that? It is not about the connections. It's about the content that you put out onto your profile. And I still have a free LinkedIn profile. So I don't even have a premium account. I have not done any LinkedIn ads. We are just about to launch a LinkedIn uh, paid ad campaign for the very first time. And yet we have generated thousands and thousands of dollars purely by reaching out and connecting with people and getting a conversation started. So for example, if you and I connected, I'd say, Hey, Prosper, I noticed we had a mutual friend um, and you popped up and I noticed, you know, you're in the business space doing this, thought it would be great to reach out and connect with you and possibly chat to you sometimes on how we can help each other's communities out, help each other's following out, you know, coming from a place of truly serving. This is not a promotional space. This is truly, can I give your community value and can you give my community value kind of thing? 
And from there, developing that conversation into a relationship that then fosters into potentially a transaction down the track. But you don't go in with the hard sell or with the link to download something or buy something or anything like that. So that's what we've been using on LinkedIn. It is a little bit more time consuming in terms of that relationship building process. Uh, but overall, uh, people feel a lot more trust in that process. And that's what we want to, um, you know, that's what we want to give them. We want to build that relationship and let whatever comes in time kind of foster along the way and then, you know, help them with their business. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, you do understand people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So the more you build those relationships, people get to know you, they trust you, and then they even like you. Now, obviously, you're dropping a lot of value right here. Um, (laughs) I'm afraid you might start charging us, um, you know, (laughs) with with the way things are going on. How how then can people learn all of these things um, from you, especially? Yeah, look, um, I'm on Facebook. So um, I would love for people to connect with me. Make sure you send me a message. (laughs) Um, Send me a message and connect with me either on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with people. And look, I'm always open about giving people resources. So if you're just connecting because you'd love me to break something down for you and give you a little bit of a step-by-step one page, you know, Word document or PDF that, you know, you can implement in your business, just be upfront and honest and say, hey, Samantha, I watched something would love, you know, whatever it is that you were saying, do you have a resource? And I'd be more than happy to give you that. Um, because to me, I'm like, if I can save you from one mistake that you can make, I have done my job. <laughs> you know, um, That's what it's all about. It's about, you know, helping those people stay in business because the amount of businesses in Australia specifically that are shutting down before they even get to the five year mark is just astounding. So I'm like, if I can give you one thing that's going to keep you there for the six year mark, then I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you also have physical workshops? Maybe some people learn by seeing, doing and being around other people as well. Yeah. So um, in February, we have two workshops for people that are looking to write a book. We have an author workshop that, Uh, runs for about three hours and we actually unpack their story live in the room so if you had a particular topic that you were thinking about writing a book we actually map all your chapters live in the room and that we're running that in Mary Warren at the Waterman Business Center and one in Richmond on the same night so the 21st of February and for those of you that are looking more for a marketing side of thing um, as we mentioned before Prosper the one dollar workshop that is happening in Richmond so it's just one dollar to register it's a two-hour workshop from in the morning till 12 noon in Richmond on the 19th of February. So it's a Monday. Um, And in that, I actually go through how to actually put some content together for Facebook and LinkedIn. It's very much Facebook and LinkedIn based. Uh, It's a dollar to register. No hidden patches. There's no money at the end. No, do this or register. No, no, no. I just pay $1. And purely that strategy, I actually cover in the room that $1 strategy. I cover it in the $1 workshop. Uh, But it's very much about just... I, I want to know whether people are genuinely committed to coming and getting, you know, two hours worth of interactive stuff that is going to help them propel their business. So, yeah, so two workshops, 19th of February and then the 21st of February as well. Absolutely. So all this value cheaper than a $2 shop at the shopping center. <laughs> That's it. You know, you hear, you heard it first. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, obviously, I mean, Samantha, this has been fantastic. You brought the house down and I should think the people that are sitting, um, you know, watching this video right now, are, you know, taking down notes as you've been giving so much value. I've got a page full of notes here as well. And I've been learning <laughs> from what you've been saying. It's the um, beginning of the year. We sort of finishing the second week or is it yep. of the second month? of the year so resolutions are still really really fresh and um, people are still really thinking of you know goals and how they want to uh, show up this year in 2018 any sort of last words that you can help people to maintain you know their zeal on the straight and narrow or you know whatever mistakes they might be about to commit that you can save them from which happens to be your favorite thing to do yeah look um it's interesting you mentioned goals uh i think there is a little bit of um, a hype that starts 
in January about, oh, there are all these goals I want to achieve and I'm going to sit there and do it and map it out. I think come February, the hype dies down a little bit. If I could give one piece of advice, it is sometimes it's okay if the goal changes a little bit throughout the year, as long as you are staying on track to that purpose and vision that you have you know, for your business. So obviously when you started in business, there was a core purpose that was driving what it is that you wanted. And sometimes you have to change the course a little bit. As I said, you know, in terms of if I was to give an example, you know, if you're traveling to the city, you don't always have to take the freeway. You can take the side roads to get there. Um, it might be a little bit longer. There might be a bit more traffic, but you can still get there. So I think it's really important that as long as, you know, you know what that end process is or that big vision that you have, if the goal shifts a little bit, that's okay. Don't be discouraged by it because that's a learning in itself. And really, really important to, you know, that keep the purpose at the core of it, you know, because we can um, get a little bit hung up with the next cool opportunity or the next shiny thing that appears. And then that could revamp the whole thing. But it's really important to go, do I really need that? Is that a distraction or is that a genuine opportunity? And checking in with, how is that going to help me get to my purpose? You know, how is that fulfilling the mission that I'm on? And then if the goal moves, it moves a little bit. That's okay. So, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Because a lot of people do have what you mentioned there as uh, shiny object syndrome. Yes. All right. So, and then they, before you know it, the year ends and they haven't really achieved anything um, out there. So if you're watching this, you would be very appreciative of, um, you know, the value that Samantha has just laid down on us. And you can see um, proof positive that she is on a mission to actually help small business owners dominate their industry. So if that's your mission for 2018, I think Samantha is your girl. Go on. I mean, it's only a dollar for one of the workshops. If you're in Melbourne, you know, check it out and see how you two can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much, Samantha, for your time today. Thank you for having me, Prosper. Really appreciate it. Bye for now. Bye.